Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Milpagust. Waddle Squash. Now then, right at the current time, it's the 14th of Hematite, 411, early summer of what I believe to be our ninth year here. Yes, we've continued on into this year just a little bit, and you may remember that we rolled a dice to commune with Mengfor, but this has yet to coalesce. We've seen nothing, which we're not complaining about at all, frankly. Yes, we're quite enjoying this recent piece. For the past year and a half before this, we had Scord running around beating people up all the time, but that doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. Even Voli Eridin, our farmer, he's completely come around as well. That year of rest really did us a lot of good, I think. And right now, we're experiencing no problems at all due to stress. Great to see. This means we can continue on safely with our work. Very excited about this. Now then, our first order of business is going to be down here by our mines. Remember, we're trying to get rock blocks. We're going to use this Gabro here. We're just starting in on that now. And really, I'm not sure what we're going to do with it first. Maybe some roads? Although, as I said before, we're going to need a lot of stone if that's our goal. We'll just keep Hans the Mason working at it in the background. We'll get enough before long, I'm sure. And then back in town, if you have a look over here, you can see in the upper floor of a couple of these new houses we were working on. We're just trying to finish those off right now. I imagine they'll be completed by year's end, and then we can get started on more. With this, we'll have completed eight new houses, which could be enough to take on eight new migrants. Remember, that is what we did last time we finished up eight houses. We'll have to think on that a little bit. Gotta really make sure things have settled down first, you know? Don't want to take on too much if it's avoidable. But yes, alongside our work, we've been trying to get some books stored away. Um, I, I should mention that we've been trying to tone down the work a bit. We've been working way too much lately. We don't want to get stressed out again. Not at all. And in this free time, we've been able to get some books stored in the Little Pumpkin Library. And I say some books, but really it's a great many books. They're one of the things that the Spectres bring when they uh, explode at our borders. And yeah, it's an incredible amount. Let's have a look. Well, I can see the Little Pumpkin Library. All visitors welcome. And right at the current time, we have 365 books in the library. This is incredible. 365 really is beyond belief. And we have those specters to thank. Truly, they are a blessing. I do notice, too, that a lot of the visitors who come to the Bent Limb also come over here as well. Just kind of hang out, do some studying. It's pretty good to see. It makes me think that maybe the library is actually a bigger attraction than the Bent Limb Inn. I was thinking it might have to be one of the places that we get outfitted with rock blocks before the other buildings. Maybe give it a nice upgrade as well. Actually, you know, that might be a pretty darn good idea. Someone living in Waddle Squash who I have not talked about almost at all is the Catling Rans Silernor. You may remember that we took her on quite a while ago. It was shortly after we took on those first two strangelings. Now, Rans here is a scholar, and she's been doing an awful lot of studying in the Little Pumpkin. She went from being a scholar to a philosopher, and now she considers herself to be a sage. I find this pretty interesting. You know, recently she actually made a discovery all by herself, and I believe she's the first one in the Autumn Kingdom to come up with something like this. Rans independently discovered the method of collecting and evaluating artifacts to learn about history and culture. Perhaps she was spurred on in this endeavor by our recent efforts to kind of figure out the history of the world. Certainly makes sense to me. Curious to see what other discoveries she'll make. Keep at it, Rans. We'll get you a bigger studying space before long. I really hope Rans and the other two strangelings petition for full citizenship at some point soon. It's nice having them around, but I would like it if they would work for us and stuff. I'm sure it'll happen before long. But even if it doesn't, meh, that's probably fine too. Not gonna worry about it too much. Now then, we're out of the library and back to Waddle Squash proper. You can see that we've chosen to not upgrade the library right now and have instead opted to use those stone blocks for roads. We haven't started replacing any wood in the buildings quite yet. No, I figured a nice avenue would be a good idea. You can see some narrow paths leading away to each of the houses and to the chapel and to the trade depot. Figured that'd be a good idea. Oh, and you will notice too, a wide bridge that crosses the brook. We had a couple of foot bridges, but that was just a temporary thing. This one here is much finer than those. Could make it a covered bridge too, I think. I know it's not really necessary. This brook isn't very deep, but figured what the hell. Let's spoil ourselves a little bit. Water Squash deserves a nice covered bridge, don't you think? Plus this area here is all kind of mucky and swampy anyways, so yeah, this will work out just fine. It's coming along. And this year is coming along as well. We are blasting straight through it. And before we get to the end, I think we should go over some reports that we've received from the mysterious caves beneath Waddle Squash, relayed by Scord, the former woodburner. From the sounds of it, the guy's been having a hell of a time down there. The caves don't seem to be quite as peaceful as we made them out to be at the beginning. You see, the first thing Scord did was go out and explore in the caves. 
and what he saw was strange. There is an enormous volume of water down there, which he had to use some winding tunnels to circumvent. He found clusters of gems in the walls, different stone that we don't have access to up here in the mines, quartzite mostly. But strangest of all, he found that the ground was covered with a layer of grass, extremely similar to what we'd find up here on the surface. This is strange. You would think that grass needs sun to live, wouldn't you? Of course, you'd think a pumpkin would need sun to live too, being a plant-like creature. But with how much grass there is down here, maybe that's just not the case. Maybe pumpkins can do just fine without sun. They do consume food, unlike other plants do. So maybe that's how they get their nutrients. And perhaps that's how the grass down here gets its nutrients. Which leads us into another discovery Scored has made down there. He stumbled upon the corpses of quite a few different creatures down there. He saw the remains of some giant spiders and some giant bats. A giant salamander. Very similar to creatures you'd see up on the surface, but just enormous. We assume at this point that the creatures died just due to, like, predators and stuff. Just out there hunting each other, you know? But anyways, Score did a whole bunch of exploring out there, encountered some dead ends, and was planning to mine through them, just to see what else might be down there. But the guy was waylaid by some giant bats. Now, luckily our little friend down there was armed with his mining pick, which he used to kill two giant bats. A remarkable feat, though he did not escape without taking damage, he took quite a bit actually. Remember that he had his right foot torn off in the past. Well, now the guy's right lower leg is gone, from his knee vines down. On top of that, his left hand is gone as well, which means he can no longer mine. He has his crutch, you know? He's gotta be able to use his crutch to move around. Uh, that being said, apparently he could still fight with the pick, he just can't mine with it anymore. I don't know how this works exactly, he's holding both his crutch and a pick in his right hand and can kind of like use it to fight still. I don't know, he's getting it figured out. Anyways, after he killed those two bats and couldn't explore any farther because he can't mine anymore, he successfully butchered both the giant bats, tanned their hides, and then fashioned their bones into a suit of very crude bat bone armor, including a helmet, greaves, and gauntlets, or gauntlet one. <laughs> he was able to turn their hides into a shield and armor, though I don't think he was thinking straight because he can't use the shield, he's missing a hand. But still, the guy's crudely armed for battle down there, just in case he gets attacked again. Though that being said, Scord has now locked himself in his little bedroom shaft here, and has been trying his best to just kinda nice the place up as much as he can. There's only so much you could do in a mining shaft like this, but he's trying. I believe his plan now is to just kinda smooth up the walls a bit, and then I think he wants to engrave some images on there, and also he's going to start taking these supports out as well. Wants to give him as much space to work as possible. Plus he needs more building materials now that he can't mine no more stone. So I suppose it makes sense. Also, you can see this little room over here to the left. We've constructed this area here just so we can get food and drinks safely to Scord without him escaping, though he's being extremely cooperative. We have two sets of doors, and we can open the outer one to have our pumpkins go in and deliver food and drinks to him, which has been necessary. Early on, we had a large rat run into the place and run away with a barrel of food. And other than that, the guy doesn't seem to be capable of getting any food his own down there. There's nothing to forage for. He tried fishing, but apparently there's nothing in the water. Oh, you know, he actually did get some food, now that I think of it. He was able to cook up some of that bat meat. He made it into something. Actually, I'm kind of curious to see what he ended up doing. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. I prepared giant bat spleen roast. Five of them. The ingredients are minced prepared giant bat lung, minced chopped giant bat liver, minced giant bat tripe, and minced prepared giant bat spleen. Oh wow, that sounds really good. Scored is not a cook. Um, I suppose it goes without saying, having a look at this. But you know, it's good that he's trying his best on there. That much is clear. Just really hoping the guy can pull it together eventually. We don't want him to die. But yes, Scored's gonna continue his work down there, trying to nicen up his home as much as possible. And maybe since he's been cooperating so well, we'll throw in some extra goods into his next delivery. But for now, we're moving back up to the surface. Where we could see it's the 14th of Granite 412, early spring of our 10th year. Wow, it's our 10th year. Go figure, time is flying. Yes, and since we've begun a new year, well, first we should evaluate our last year. We rolled a cloud on Mengfor's die, meaning we would accomplish something great. Honestly, I can't really say we've accomplished anything super of note up here on the surface this past year. Not sure what we're missing. Maybe our accomplishment is having a nice peaceful year. I could see that. Of course, I guess Scored also had a great accomplishment down underground. He was able to survive up till now anyways. Very interesting. I think Magnifor was talking about this peaceful year. 
That had to be it. It really was a great accomplishment, wasn't it? Good job, pumpkins. Now then, yes, the die. Let's get to rolling. Oh, great festive one of infinite wisdom. We ask you, what can humble Waddle Squash expect in this new year? You roll, divining the will of Mengfor according to the practice of the beige denomination. The rock salt of decahedral die lands on a four-pointed star. Good fortune. Excellent. Yes, things have turned right around for us, haven't they? This last year, we were able to accomplish a nice calm year, and this next year will be filled with good fortune. More calmness to come, I'll bet. Excellent. Thank you, Mengfor. Let's continue on, Pumpkins. Well, first off, if we have a look up here at some of these new houses we were working on, they're all done now. The shell of them, anyways. We still have to get most of them furnished, but we already have some furniture being made as we speak. We're gonna have to plan up some new ones now. But first, looking down here at our road, you can see that's coming along as well. Looking pretty darn good, too, I'd say. And we already have a significant number of new rock blocks made, too. So we'll just be continuing our way over to the east, throwing down rock blocks as we go. Uh, but yes, some new houses. Hmm, I'm thinking we should start getting a little crafty with a layout. Water Squash is getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? I know I had mentioned making some sort of a duplex or something before. A multi-family house of some variety. I think we should explore that a little bit more deeply now. And I'm thinking maybe we should do it right over here, next to the sheriff's office. It'd be good to get a whole bunch of pumpkins in close to the heart of Waddle Squash. So yeah, a multi-family house here would be an excellent idea. Man, we'll do it something like this right here. Man, this is going to be a titanic structure. There's going to be six houses in here, and they're just going to be slightly smaller than those previous ones we've made. They're each going to have an upper floor and a total of three rooms, just like the other houses. I think it's going to work out fine. As it is, the houses we've been giving to the pumpkins have been pretty much mansions this entire time. Something slightly smaller isn't going to be much of a problem. What will be a problem is wood. We're pretty much out at the moment. We'll have to get Glur out to the forest to start chopping again. And of course, if we're making a big structure like this, we'll need plenty of windows. More wood for that, too. Yeah, get the chopping, buddy. And actually, you know, we just got started cutting down some trees over here, just behind the church, because I'm thinking we need a place for a cemetery. That's not something we've had to consider yet, but at the current time, we do have the remains of two humans on site. Not something I'm too thrilled about, but if their corpses aren't going to be claimed, then we should at least put them to rest in proper fashion, shouldn't we? It's only right. And yeah, we'll do it back here. It's kind of small, but here's hoping we won't need a bigger cemetery at all. I think this will do just fine. Now then, to get us started off, we have Hans over here constructing a couple of Gabbro slabs. Memorial slabs. We're going to get them engraved after they're finished. Next thing we'll want to do is come over here and dig a couple of nice deep holes. In accordance to Mengfor's will, the corpses have to be buried, but not so deep that future sprouting pumpkins can't make use of their nutrients. That's the only way their soul can pass on. There we go, just like that. Excellent. Now we just have to get the remains down there and cover them up nice. But it might take a bit for the pumpkins to get around to that, so in the meantime, we're going to engrave those slabs we made. They're both finished now. I'm pretty interested to see what the pumpkins choose to put on these slabs, too. The two that we're burying in the cemetery are that human who was killed by Whiten, whose body is still laying out in that field, as well as that bard that Scord killed recently. Looks like one of the slabs is being worked on right now, and has just been finished up. Let's have a look. This is a memorial to Enzo Edmikinord. The slab reads, in memory of Enzo Edmikinord, born 346, went missing in the year 410. I see that Hans chose to say, went missing. Hmm. <laughs> it seems the pumpkins are trying to keep it hush-hush. Couldn't blame them. And here's that second slab, to Barrow, that thieving adventurer character. Megvor rest his soul. Yeah, same thing. In memory of Beryl Fatimosmi, born 345, went missing in the year 407. Went missing. It's probably for the best. Good job, pumpkins. Here we go. First of Moonstone, 412. Early winter, and the darkest day of Water Squash so far. The armies of R have found us. Okay. Things may be taking a serious turn now. We can see at the moment there appears to be several bogies up to the north. Behind the pumpkin pen, they look to be trained fighters but poorly equipped, as bogey warriors tend to be. Still though, they pose a serious threat to us pumpkins. I've already ordered everyone to go to the church, just like we've done before. I don't think they're going to be able to make their way there quickly, just because I imagine they're fairly spread out around Waddle Squash, but at least some of them will get there. Whiten currently is armed and is on his way up, though he's a good distance away too. It's going to take him a bit. 
Ugh, let's see what these guys do. Oh, okay, they're off. Quickly, scattering out down to the southwest. Uh, I don't know what the hell they're doing. They seem terribly disorganized. <laughs> bogeys. I guess you'd have to expect it. Anyways, yes, let's see how this goes. We can see the bogeys over here moving down to the southwest. There are four of them, and as I said, they are very poorly armed. Just wearing loincloths and holding crude weapons. Staves, seemingly. I'm only counting four right now. Where the hell are they going? Oh my goodness, those monsters. The bogeys are headed up into the trees. The badger trees, specifically. Yeah, look at them go. Just swinging through the branches. What the hell's the goal here? Are they killing our badgers? Well, it certainly seems that way. Yeah, there's at least one up here clubbing badgers out of the tree with their staff. Oh yeah, they are killing them. Where the hell's Whiten? Okay, Whiten is over here in his house right now, attempting to go eat some food. I'll tell you what, this guy moves incredibly slowly because of his steel armor. And I can't imagine him getting back in time. I'm gonna try to get him to take his armor off so he can run back over there. We have to preserve our badgers. Come on, Whiten, hurry up, will ya? Having a look back over here, the bogies are still up in the trees, just kind of brachiating through the branches. They seem to be in some sort of elevated state. A wild fury. Animals. Okay, here comes White, and finally he's done eating and he's dropped most of his armor except for his musket. And his musket balls, of course. Okay, there he goes. He's taking aim and firing at the bogies up in the trees. Repeatedly. He's pretty rusty using his musket. Oh. He's climbed up into the branches and has engaged one of the bogies. Oh man, this can get dicey. It looks like the other one's trying to get over to White in now, but he's just firing away. I think he caught him off guard. These idiots. <laughs> well, that's exactly what you get. Yeah, the Whiten's going to town on these guys. They're totally panicked now. Just dangling from the branches as Whiten continues to fire bronze musket balls. Yeah, okay, there we go. Easy as cake, really. He's dispatched one of the bogies and is moving on to the next one. Boy, this doesn't seem fair, but... I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? We have to preserve our badgers. They were trying to come in here and take away our livelihood. And there we go. Finished him off. No problem whatsoever. Now we have to get the guy down. <laughs> Though we may have run into another issue over here. I'm just noticing now a couple of humans attacking a strangeling. Not one of our strangelings, just someone who frequents the bent limb. I don't know what the hell the deal is. One of these humans is the royal treasurer, the one that we deal with when we trade with the humans, and the other one appears to be a well-armed spearman, like that Beryl Fatimosmi character that Whiten killed previously. They're both just beating the hell out of the strangeling, and yeah, again, I don't know why, or what they would do to our pumpkins. If you have a look over here, you can see all of our pumpkins are locked up safely inside the church right now, so they are safe for the time being, but they are starting to get thirsty and hungry. They can't remain in there forever, though Pastor Chert has been doing her best to keep them occupied with sermons to Meng for. Hang in there, pumpkins. I guess what we're going to do is have Whiten go through the covered bridge, and I'm, I'm just going to try stationing him at the other end for now. Again, I don't know if these people are going to attack us. They're not marked as being hostile, but I would really like an explanation as to why they're murdering that poor strangeling. Here comes Whiten, approaching and going through the covered bridge. And now looking over there, I can see the poor dead strangeling, and those humans are nowhere to be seen. Mm, having a look, they appear to be walking away, back down towards the bent limb. Although they appear to be moving erratically, and I don't know what the deal is. They just kind of clambered over a pond for some bizarre reason. Oh yeah, look at that, they went into the bent limb, and now they're just fighting people. The poor strangelings in there can't do anything. Here comes that human too, are they attacking? I don't know what's going on. This is terrible. And so unfortunately, the only thing I could think to do right now is have Whiten go down there and try to deal with this. We can't have those strangelings die. That's not something anybody wants to see. Especially not Whiten. Not in his peaceful home. And so yes, he's heading down now, going around the bent limb, and approaching the area where we last saw the humans, who appear to have left the bent limb and are now heading over to the west. Not too sure what the goal is here, they may be leaving. We could see Whiten standing here now. Not aggressive anymore. Holding down his musket, perhaps. Maybe giving the humans a chance to leave. They're approaching. Whiten's backing off for now. I was really hoping they'd just run away. We don't want war with the humans. And I have a feeling that if we kill the royal treasurer, then that might stir things up a bit. Though, that seals it right there. We have to finish this.
Boy, that's a cliffhanger, huh? <laughs> Sorry. Gotta cut it off though, it's just how it goes. Gives you something to look forward to. You're welcome. And now we're gonna start talking about some behind the scenes things. Now then, I had a whole bunch of stuff that warrants an explanation in this episode. Of course, we're still doing that dice stuff there. I explained that last episode. It seems to be working out pretty well, I guess. Um, it'll be interesting to see how we play the good fortune role that we got at the beginning of this year, because it does not seem like it's a very fortunate year at all. <laughs> so far, anyways. The year's not over yet. But yes, aside from that, we have scored locked down underground, and I'm gonna tell you what, it's kind of a giant pain in the butt to juggle Waddle Squash and Scored down there. Especially at the beginning when I first had him down there, that's why I chose to lock him away, just to make sure he doesn't get killed. It's a little difficult to record above ground Waddle Squash stuff and make sure I'm watching everything a Scored does and like getting that recording too. That's why I chose to just kind of like talk about Scored's doings in the past tense. I guess. I was recording a bit of what he was doing, and so that's what you saw in the episode in terms of the game footage, but it's not very clean, you know, it's just fragmented, I guess. So I think that's how we'll be doing it, mostly talking about what Scored has been doing down there, instead of the more current happenings that we see in Waddle Squash proper. Still just really hoping that guy doesn't lose it though, I don't know the exact mechanics behind when your citizens go permanently, like, insane in this game. But it can happen, especially to people who are really over the edge, like Scord. That's why he's trying to keep his home nice as possible down there. We'll see how that works out for him. That's a real darn shame that he lost the use of his other hand there. I was really hoping to get him out there, do some serious mining, look around a whole bunch down there. I really don't know what else is down there. So hopefully we get a chance to do that at some point. Of course, maybe the pumpkins won't have a choice other than to go underground permanently at some point, if tensions with the bogeys and the humans increase any farther, that is. We really don't have any way to defend ourselves at all. Kinda horrible. But I'm sure it'll work out with Mangfoy's grace, right? <laughs> Another thing I'd like to explain, or at least talk about because I can't really give an explanation, are the bogeys. Now, they showed up, it was a group of like maybe six of them or so, and as soon as I unpaused the game, like I wasn't ready to record, that's why initially they went running off at the speed of light. Usually I slow the game footage down a bit, but they, they went running off. And I think there were four initially, like two of those initial bogeys went running away. The other four just went running around, and then two of those four went running off a little bit later, leaving us with only two bogeys, who were only carrying metal staves and wearing loincloths. So I'm not too sure how they work exactly in here. They're certainly not as well armed as goblins typically are in Dwarf Fortress, like head to toe armor and all that stuff. So really they shouldn't pose nearly as much of a threat. Though, look at Waddle Squash. We've got one gunman right now. Even if six bogeys showed up all carrying staves, we'd be screwed. They'd smash our pumpkins right up, wouldn't they? Wouldn't be stellar. Should probably wrap it up. Hey, thanks for watching today. I truly appreciate it. And I certainly hope to see you next time here in Milpagust. Waddle Squash. And until then, you bearded bastards.